So if you're like me, you don't want your personal files being harvested for data points by Google, Microsoft, Facebook, or anybody else that might see fit to harvest your personal information for monetary gain. But you need a cloud storage service. You need to be able to sync files between your desktop PC and an app on your mobile phone so you can access files no matter where you're at. You want photos you take on your phone to automatically sync so that you don't have to manually plug your phone into your PC and copy the files over. You want to be able to share some of those photos publicly. You want a contact you add on your phone to show up in your email client when you get home. You want the appointment you added to the calendar on your PC to give you an alert on your phone without manually adding the appointment to two separate devices. You want to accomplish all of this with an easy to understand end user interface. You want what people like Google and Microsoft offer, but you don't want it from them. You want to take control of your data and your privacy. Enter Nextcloud. I recently learned about the existence of Nextcloud from the Linux Gamer here on YouTube, and I decided to give it a shot. Nextcloud is basically a self-hosted replacement for a lot of the basic services provided by Google and Microsoft. You can sync files, contacts, calendars, task lists, notes, and through the use of community add-ons called apps, do all kinds of nifty stuff like operate your own chat server, all on your own hardware. Nextcloud has both server and desktop software and is available for Linux, Mac OS X, Windows, Android, iOS, Windows Mobile, and through third-party apps, even Ubuntu Touch, which my brother uses on his mobile phone. Personally, I have migrated everything except email to Nextcloud. I've straight up deleted my Dropbox account, deleted all copies of my files from Google Drive, Google Photos, Microsoft OneDrive, and I went beyond simple deactivation and have my Facebook account queued for complete deletion. I'm taking control of my own data, and I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. Today I'm going to show you how to quickly get up and running with your own Nextcloud server. Obviously you'll need a PC that you're willing to make a dedicated home server that will be on 24-7. There are several tasks we need to accomplish by the end of this video. Install Nextcloud server software. Open ports on the firewall. Create our first user that will be the admin account. Configure the server to use HTTPS instead of just normal HTTP. Forward ports on the router. Set up a public host name and configure Nextcloud accordingly. Relocate the data directory to another drive. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be running Ubuntu Server Edition 18.04, and as such, we're going to be working in the terminal for most things until the server is up and operational, at which point you can interact with Nextcloud using its web interface. Step 1. Install the Nextcloud service. Once you're logged into your server, getting Nextcloud started is as simple as running sudo snap install Nextcloud. I chose the Snap version of Nextcloud because it comes with everything pre-configured as part of one large package. There's no need to manually add virtual servers to an existing Apache configuration, no need to manually set up a database, etc. You can of course modify the configuration after it's installed, but typing four words into the terminal is a lot easier than installing each individual component manually. Step 2. Ensure that your service firewall is set to allow traffic on ports 80 and 443. To do that in Ubuntu Server, you just run sudo ufw allow 80 and sudo ufw allow 443. It may also be a good idea to restart your firewall with sudo ufw reload. In experimenting on virtual machines to make this video, I had an issue with getting Nextcloud to load even after adding the correct port rules until I restarted UFW in this way. If you get a message telling you that your firewall is disabled and you want to use your firewall, just run sudo UFW enable. Step 3. Log in and create your first and admin user account. To do this, just hop onto a client machine on your network, open a web browser, and in the address bar, enter the IP address for your server. Once you browse to that IP using a web browser on another machine, you'll be presented with a login prompt where it's asking you to create a user account. Enter a desired username and password and click the Finish Setup button. At this point, it might take a long time, as in several minutes, for you to see anything. It took six and a half minutes for my dual core virtual machine to finish. Just leave the web browser open until it finishes and eventually you'll be presented with a fancy little Welcome to Nextcloud sort of overlay. Once you click through that, you'll be dropped into your default files area of Nextcloud. Step 4 is to enable HTTPS 
so that our connection to the server is encrypted. This isn't strictly necessary if you won't be accessing Nextcloud from outside your own network. This will ensure that your communications with the server are encrypted so that nefarious actors cannot easily intercept your communications. Enabling HTTPS is as simple as running one of two commands depending on your preferences. If you're comfortable with using a self-signed certificate, simply run sudo nextcloud.enable-https self-signed. If you would like one issued from Let's Encrypt, simply replace self-signed with let's-encrypt so that the command looks like this. I personally went with a self-signed certificate. This means that you don't have to register your certificate with a third party, and you can advertise your server on non-default ports to avoid getting hammered with web crawlers and other bots trying to infiltrate your network. This means that you and other users may be presented with a warning message from Firefox or Chrome telling you the source is untrusted, and you may have to perform an extra step in web browsers to continue on to the site. Step 5 is to forward the ports on your router. This step is not necessary if you only plan on using your Nextcloud server from within your own network. The ports you forward do not have to be ports 80 or 443, they can be different. As I mentioned in step 4, this has the advantage of helping you avoid most automated attacks, web crawlers, etc. I learned very early on in my days of hosting a personal slash home server that anything that needs to be exposed to the internet should probably not be exposed using its default port. This is simply security through obscurity and won't stop an active attacker who actually wants into your network, but it will stop the majority of the malicious traffic you would see if you advertised on regular old ports 80 and 443. When I used to host my stuff on the default ports, although I was never compromised, Apache would fill 4 or 5 log files a day with login attempts. Anyway, the methods for forwarding ports is different from one router to the next. Using my Linksys router, you simply browse to the router's configuration page, click Security, then Apps and Gaming, then Single Port Forwarding. The fields you need to concern yourself with are as follows. Application name is just a name you give to this rule. It can be anything. The external port is the port that your server will be advertised on externally, in other words, to any devices trying to connect to it from the internet. The internal port is the port that the server is actually listening on. The device IP number is exactly that, the IP address of the server. In this case, we can set the application name as Nextcloud, the external port as 8080, the internal port as 443, and the IP of the server itself. This means that internally, you can still browse to your server using HTTPS colon whack whack server IP. To browse it externally, you will now need to append the port number so that the address is HTTPS colon whack whack some domain name colon 8080. Note that the external port doesn't have to be 8080. You can make it anything you want to be that isn't already in use. I don't run my server on port 8080. I simply picked it for the purpose of this video. Step 6 is to get your own dynamic DNS host name. This step is optional, especially if your public IP doesn't change, if you already have a host name that points to your network, or if you only plan on using your Nextcloud server from within your own network. This will eliminate the need to memorize your public IP address, which could change from time to time. There are several services out there that offer free dynamic host names. I use noip.com, which offers a single free dynamic host name. I actually pay a small fee for my host name, so I only have to renew it once a year. If you use the free service, you do have to log into your account and renew your name once a month to keep it from expiring. One reason I chose the service I did is because my Linksys router has built-in support for this service. If you go to the router config page, then click Security, then Apps and Gaming, the first tab you'll see is DDNS, where you can enter the service and credentials for your hostname. This ensures that my router itself will automatically update that hostname every so often to make sure that it always points to the correct public IP address given to me by my ISP. If you want to use no IP and your router doesn't have built-in support, they offer a dynamic update client for Linux that you can set up on your server if you wish. Step 7. Configure your Nextcloud server to allow connections using the dynamic DNS hostname you set up in Step 6. This step is important as your Nextcloud service will only accept connections from clients that are using a name or IP that are present in its configuration. So any name or IP that a client might be using to connect to the server needs to have an entry in the configuration. 
That includes your dynamic DNS host name used to access it from outside your home, names you may have entered into your own DNS server, or even entries you add to the host file on your clients. To do this on your server, you need to perform the following tasks. You need to edit Nextcloud's config.php file using your favorite terminal text editor, and you need to do it as root because without root privileges you can't even read the file, let alone edit it. So we'll run sudo nano slash var slash snap slash nextcloud slash current slash nextcloud slash config slash config.php. Now scroll down and pay close attention until you find the line that says trusted underscore domains. Below that, you'll see an array with a line that lists the internal IP address of the server as a trusted domain. We need to add an entry for each name that clients might use to access the server, increasing the number by one for each additional line we add. Simply go to the end of the line for the one existing entry, then press enter, and space over until you're lined up with the zero on the existing line, and start with the next number, a one, and enter your new name, exactly duplicating the look of the first line only changing the domain name. When done, save the file, then exit. In Nano, this is done by holding Control and pressing O, then confirming the file name by simply pressing Enter, then exiting by holding Control and pressing X. Then, restart the Nextcloud service by running sudo snap restart Nextcloud. Step 8. Relocate your data directory. One downside to the Snap version having everything done for you out of the box is that it skips the part of the setup that would normally ask you where you want your user data located. On top of that, there's no GUI-fied way to move your data directory on an existing Nextcloud install, and at least based on what I can find regarding this issue, there's no command to do it either. This is fine if you don't mind your user data being stored on your primary OS drive, but if your system drive is relatively small, or you want your data stored on a RAID drive or something, then you may want to have your data stored there. On top of all this, snap packages are pretty locked down and segregated from the rest of the system, so they don't have normal access to any drives other than your primary OS drive. So even if you modified the data directory directive in the config.php file, there's no guarantee it would work if you pointed it at a location the snap didn't have permission to access. The way to get around all this is to move your data folder to the desired location and then mount it back into its original location. There are a few steps involved here. First on the server, stop the running Nextcloud service with sudo snap stop Nextcloud. Next you need to move the data directory to the desired location. The directory is slash var slash snap slash Nextcloud slash common slash Nextcloud slash data. So, for example, if you had a storage drive mounted at slash mnt slash storage, the command would be this. Next, we need to create an empty data directory in the original location and give it the same ownership and permissions as the original. This can be accomplished with the following commands. sudo mkdir slash var slash snap slash nextcloud slash common slash nextcloud slash data sudo chown root colon root path to that data folder then sudo chmod 770 path to that data folder. Next we need to mount the relocated data directory into the empty one we just created with the dash dash bind argument. We could do this manually now but it would be better to add the mount command to your fs tab so that it mounts automatically on boot up. To do so, we need to run the following commands. First, make a backup of your existing FS tab file with sudo cp slash etsy slash fs tab slash etsy slash fs tab underscore backup. Then edit it with sudo nano slash etsy slash fs tab. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, add a new line, and add the following entries in this order. First is the new location of your data directory, then the original location of the data folder that we had to recreate, then the word none, then the word bind. The space between each of these entries is achieved by using the physical tab key on your keyboard one time. Make sure you use the physical tab key to insert the spaces between entries on this line. 
Don't worry if the spaces are not uniform in their size when doing it this way. This is normal and the way FSTab is expected to look by your system. When you're finished, use Control plus O followed by the enter key to save the file, then Control plus X to exit nano. Running sudo mount hyphen A should now mount everything located in your FSTab file, including your new Nextcloud data directory. Barring any errors, you can now restart the Nextcloud service with sudo snap start Nextcloud. At this point, you're done. The rest is just setting up client software. Just make note of the appropriate URLs to access your server. Devices on the same network will use HTTPS colon whack whack the IP of the server. Devices on the internet, such as your cell phones, will use HTTPS colon whack whack your domain name colon the port number that you specified in your router. On my Android phone, I use the DAVX5 app to sync contacts and calendars so that my contacts and calendar apps can see them. The address you need for DAVX5 is listed in the front page of your Nextcloud web interface when you click the Settings button at the bottom left. I use the Simple Contacts and Simple Calendar apps to interact with the data synced by DAVX5. I use the official Nextcloud app for Android to sync files and such automatically. I use the Nextcloud Desktop Client app on Ubuntu for my desktop PC. When connecting to your server for the first time using a new device or a piece of client software, you may get a warning about the self-signed certificate, at which point, since you know the server is safe, you can simply accept the certificate and move on. You can add users in the Nextcloud web interface, add apps to extend the functionality of your server, etc. When setting a quota on new users, note that you can manually type your own value. You are not limited to the three or four options listed in the dropdown. The next step in taking control of your data is closely examining what apps you use on your devices and how much access you give them to your information. For example, I kept the Google Docs apps on my phone and figured I would just use those to interact with documents stored on my Nextcloud server. This worked fine, but I noticed that whenever I would open a file with a Google Docs app, there would be a very brief notice that said saved as Google Docs file at the bottom of my screen. I had deleted everything from my Google Drive, so I double checked and sure enough, any file I had opened using a Google app on my phone was being duplicated to Google Drive. Even though I was editing the file from and saving it to my private Nextcloud server, Google was making a copy of it on Google Drive unnecessarily. Upon searching through the options in the Docs app, I was not able to find an option to disable that functionality, so I decided to stop using the Google Docs apps. What you use to manipulate your data is just as important as where it's stored. Running your own Nextcloud server is a big and important step in taking back control of your online life, made possible through free and open source software. Hopefully you found this video helpful in getting started with your own Nextcloud instance. If you've got any questions about anything I covered here, feel free to comment in the comment section below. There's also a hashtag Nextcloud channel on the Freenode IRC servers, as well as Nextcloud user forums. I would appreciate it if you could give this video a like and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel so you can get notified about future content. My videos usually cover a wide array of topics, so if there's only a specific type of content you want to see, I've got playlists on my channel where I sort my videos to help people only find the kind of content that they want to see. As always, this is Garrowin out. Y'all take care.